Thank you very much, Tyler. I know you're tired, so thank you for putting this together for us. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Rebecca from the Monetary Authority of Singapore, and I'm joined today by Aman. Aman spent 15 years as a banker at Standard Chartered, including the role of Global Head of Digital Banking. He's also worked in the startup Bank Bazaar as CEO International, before joining the dark side and becoming a Googler in his role as Global New Payments Ecosystems Lead. It's a special day for Aman today. It's actually his birthday. So happy birthday. Thank you, Rebecca. <laughs> I'm not quite sure that you're uh, not so sure you're quite as excited to see me as I am to see you. Earlier this week, you said you know you're getting old when you get interviewed by a regulator on your birthday. So here we are. Welcome to old age, and thank you for joining me. Thanks, thanks, Rebecca. <laughs> I want to start a bit more um, about your personal background. So, 15 years in a bank, a startup, a tech giant. Rather than looking at what you've learned along the way, I want to look at what you wish you hadn't learned. So let's start with your career as a banker. What's the one thing you wish you could unlearn about that time? I think it's a good question. Um, there, there are quite a few things uh, one could think of. Um, I think um, there are two parts of the same. I, I, you can look at it in two ways. It's, I think truly scaling. I think what I've learned working in both the startup space as well as uh, as well as now at Google is is learning how to scale uh, using engineering, using data as your lever rather than um, than than traditionally using your traditional business model. So not being constrained by what what you currently have. I think in in financial services we were very uh, we were very constrained by what we had already created and sort of trying to create something incremental rather than something new and revolutionary. Uh, and then the way we went about it was thinking about it purely a lot more heavily heavy footed in the business of it as opposed to how do we actually build this to scale and then figure out how we uh, convert this into a successful business. That belief that once you reach, you reach scale, you can actually convert that into a business opportunity. Uh, you know, it's a balance, but I'd like to unlearn that a little bit uh, from back then. How about now that you're at Google? What was one thing you wish you could unlearn? And then uh, that I've learned at Google, uh, I think I think we are very very good at uh, we're very good at doing difficult things. Um, so you know, um, and, uh, and and I think one of the things that that I I wouldn't say unlearn, but one of the things that I benefit from or relearn from my banking days is is around patience around things that are um, that are hard to do, so operationally intense to do. So. Uh, again, working with banks these days, you, you're reminded of that. That is a real expertise and, and skill set in being able to sort of understand the operational rigor of what goes into delivering a product and making sure that we uh, we, we deliver that as well. You're almost getting into the, the symbiotic nature, I guess, of the tech companies and banks, which will get more later. Right. I, I'm, in, I'm in a room with that fourth, right? So it's, it's sort of like, yeah, you know, when you've got a hammer, everything's a nail. True. <laughs> Let's start deep dive first into India. Um, yeah. India has been a very unique, unique case for Google. Google Pay yeah. is probably the first product that's really been developed outside of Mountain View. Um, tell us a bit more about it and how much has the public infrastructure, I'm thinking the UPI, India stack, how much has that played a role in Google's success? Yeah, I mean, hugely. Um, I think the India stack was uh, revolutionary timing. You know, we, the, GPA as a product had incredible product market fit. And part of that reason that it had that incredible product market fit was because of the India stack and specifically UPI that, uh, that we uh, sort of uh, built on top of with banks. Um, and so uh, the short answer is it's, it's, it's been revolutionary because of that. Uh, and it's also sort of then allowed us to uh, allowed us to build on top of that and build more creative solutions uh, with banking partners. Um, it's also been very, it's been an interesting ride because we've also been, we've, we've been fortunate to be able to help, uh, you know, uh, evolve the stack and contribute to uh, the development of that from an engineering and a product perspective as well. So uh, I don't know if that answers your question, but I can't, I can't think of, I can't think of how we would have succeeded in India if we didn't have, uh, the UPI stack, uh, and, and it's similar in, in a number of different markets. Interestingly, and notably in some markets, it, it, it isn't right. And, and we've made some investments. Uh, you know, we recently 
made some commitments around something called Mojo Loop with the with the Gates Foundation, which sort of uh, in markets that it doesn't ex those kind of capabilities don't exist. How do you bring those capabilities into those markets so that uh, people, players like us, as well as financial services institutions, can actually build these ecosystems? Nice. And Mojo Loop being almost the I guess open source potential version yeah. of UPI yeah. that could be used in other markets um, around yeah. the world. So just as we go, I want to focus in on this announcement. Um, Cinder Pitch, I announced the $10 billion that are being invested into India um, to build new products. What's in it for Google for committing such a large fund for India? So, so you know, it's obviously uh, uh, the zeitgeist these days. Uh, India has been one of the largest, uh, is one of the largest internet markets. And, and we're still sort of only at 40% digitization in India. And it's still sort of, it's still been the birthplace of products, as you mentioned, uh, of products like Google Pay, uh, the current version of Pez, as it used to be known, are uh, built on top of infrastructure. Um, we've we've had incredible success in sort of even evolving traditional uh, um, products that we have, like Google Maps, learning from India and evolving that uh, for two wheeler, for example, two wheeler navigation, or Google Assistant or Translate, which you know has incredible take up. Um, I think for us, India is a is an incredible petri dish to learn from. Uh, and as we say that we are very excited about what the potential of India is in terms of not just developing for India, but being able to develop in India and take uh, things outside India. Uh, Mojo Loop is an example of like uh, you know being inspired by UPI. So so for us, it's yes, it's all a, it's about helping uh, an, in, an incredible nation sort of uh, uh, with huge potential in front of it. But it's also sort of being able to, uh, you know, seed and birth innovation in Asia that we can take across the rest of the world, which is which is different. So where's that ten billion dollars going? Well, I mean, some of it has uh, already been announced. Uh, uh, I, I mean, I think uh, uh, Reliance Geo has done an incredible job of. Uh, I think you know the, some of the most amazing things in terms of uh, accessibility for for us. You know, accessibility is a huge thing. Uh, and being able to make uh, the internet affordable and accessible has been a big part of it. So being being able to contribute to that journey and and be part of that that's exciting. Uh, so that's part of it. And the rest is uh, you know like uh, you know I I, I have uh, very little knowledge of that piece, so I probably uh, uh, stay clear of uh, answering that question. Fair enough. We're seeing lots of tech companies do the same thing in India now. Um, yeah. Is this always the plan for Google, or is COVID or potentially potential competitors impacted your strategy at all? Not really, to be very honest. I mean, uh, we've been big on uh, India and, and the emerging markets so, so before COVID, right? I mean, we, uh, we started this journey, whether it is Google Pay, whether it is all of the things I just mentioned, we started that journey well before COVID. I think, I think COVID has made us so, so anybody, not just Google, any individual, any company, large, small, that has invested in um, in technology and, and and developing itself has has seen the benefits for it. It's on the on the converse, people who've sort of talked about it but not done anything about it, uh, you know, the tides come out and they've been caught without the board shorts, uh, if you don't mind my saying, uh, on that piece. Uh, and so, so, um, so for us, there, there have been a number of great examples. Uh, happy to go into them if you want to, but like uh, where we've been able to help businesses uh, transform themselves that have already invested uh, in uh, in digital infrastructure. So it's always part of that long-term strategy for India as, as the petri dish, as you described it, the kind of yeah. testing ground for new ideas. So you've now got loan products in India. There's rumors of you starting a debit card in the US and talk of launching more financial products. Is Google trying to become a bank? Uh, no, the short answer is no. Uh, look, I, I, you've, you've named a couple of things. Like, I can't comment on, on, on some of the things which are speculation. Uh, but what I can say is that all the products uh, that are live today or, or, or being speculated or etc., we are we are we work with banks uh, to produce this. I mean, our whole approach or our methodology around this is. Uh, is to work with banks uh, to leverage national infrastructures we talked about, whether it's UPI, whether it is QR. The, the, the India stack in Singapore here, we've got in, in, uh, incredible resources uh, in terms of SGQR. We've got 
pay now. We've got all those capabilities, and 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 and, and, and all over the world. So so our approach really is to work with banks uh, rather than sort of replace them. I, I think what what we find is that uh, where we have good. Ex- really good experience of building great user experiences across uh, s- like scale and secure infrastructure. And whereas, whereas banks are incredibly experienced around building financial products uh, and, and, uh, and managing the regulatory uh, com- uh, complexities and, and understanding that. So, uh, so we're trying to sort of make sure that we leverage ourselves. It's good business as well, because we want to, we don't just want to do this in one country or two countries. We want to do this all over the world. So, if you want to do this all over the world, you've got a partner rather than uh, than go it alone. In our, that's our view. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not trying to become a bank, what spaces in financial services will Google not move into? That that's a very yeah. I mean that's a that's a. I think what we do want to do, I'll answer what we do want to create an ecosystem, right? We do want to create an ecosystem where banks. Uh, I'll tell you, like in Singapore, we work very hard to stay out of the money flow here so that the banks don't, you know, so the bank, that's their uh, business and they're focused on that. Um, we are focused on building the ecosystem uh, and bringing together merchants, banks and, and the consumer, right? When we build this, when we get these three sort of the, the tripod of this and we it, we think of it as like a flywheel, when merchants, banks and ecosystem uh, and, and uh, consumers are working, uh, are, are innovating together, uh, then amazing things happen, whether it's financial inclusion, better products, more transparency, all of that. How does that competition kind of partnership angle work? Because here in Singapore, you're partnered with DBS with their PayLah wallet. Is that not yeah. a competitor to Google Pay? Uh, no, no, it isn't. I mean, um, I, I um, we obviously we 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 when we sat down with DBS, we had this conversation as well, right? And and the way we look at it is. Uh, is if you if you look back, if I just take you back in history, uh, and this is sort of almost a verbatim the conversation, is that um, when the internet came about, we had a big role to play in the internet. Uh, you know, with search and the and the propagation of the internet, we were able to contribute significantly towards that. Uh, banks were able to build their own websites, uh, whether it's transactional or, or, or online, and 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 actually grew their business. So, um, along came the mobile phone. Uh, Android was a huge part of it. We were able, you know, banks built apps which made uh, banking on the go possible. Uh, we were able to provide that platform. Uh, with payments, it's the same thinking, Rebecca, around payments is that can, how do we create, create that platform uh, for people like DBS, for other banks uh, to be able to provide their services to consumers in, in you know, in relevant settings, contextually, uh, uh, correctly, uh, and, and, and help. Right. I mean, our, our whole job, our whole m- moniker that we go by is making money simple. Uh, we can't do that ourselves, but we can help build pl- platforms that can help banks do that. Uh, and that's that's the thinking behind that. Make money I, simple. I, yeah. So nice. Um, outside of the payment space, another angle that you're partnering with banks is around cloud. So there was the announcement yeah. last week about uh, Google's partnership with uh, Deutsche Bank. Um, to offer new products and to kind of replace what Deutsche Bank looks like internally with with Google Cloud products yeah. potentially. Um, are we likely to see a partnership like this with an Asian bank in the next year or so? Wow. Okay. Um, so you're asking me the questions I can't uh, fully answer, but look, um, I think um, I think that we we financial services for the uh, and you know my colleagues in cloud are better uh, position to answer this, but like. Um, uh, the financial services industry is a big focus for the for the cloud business for us, and so uh, the co- level of commitment from Deutsche Bank, there've been other commitments around the world, HSBC, others, um, uh, ha- has been really interesting because it's it's at scale. And having worked in financial services, this is not sort of uh, working around the edges. This is actually full fledged transformation. It's it's sort of adopting uh, new ways of working as well as new technology. So. Um, I know for a fact that we are talking to a number of different institutions about that, and and hopefully we will have a announcement, you know, soon, uh, one of these uh, quarters in in Asia around this because I think we need it. Uh, I think what it does is it also gives people courage to say, "Hang on, uh, we want to do this," you know, and and I think the time for that is correct. Whether they do that with us or whether they do it with other people uh, or a combination of that. Uh, the time to sort of get rid of legacy infrastructure and and prepare for that new 
digital era is is now. Yeah, and only kind of accelerated by the the pandemic period. Um, so yeah. if it's not with you, we'll see more of those announcements. Hopefully, at least <laughs> in the year. you'll see those announcements across the board uh, with players, and and hopefully you'll see plenty more from us. Nice. Um, one of the big trends in APAC at the moment, and I think we've heard about this on a few of the sessions earlier today, um, with neo banks being a particularly buzzy word. Um, but we think virtual banking licenses coming into play. So Hong Kong already yeah. have those launched, Singapore's in the process, so is Malaysia. Um, and this will lead to a new generation of digital banks that are coming through. How do you think the growing number of digital banks will, will play out? Um, do they have a route to monetize in the same way that you have with Google Pay in India? I think if you if you go to the redux of this sort of, I think a lot of emphasis being placed on the sort of neo versus traditional bank. I think it's uh, it's sort of been overplayed, like it's kind of sort of like Australian in, in, and uh, the English cricket team. Uh, for those who follow it, uh, uh, look, I think there's, there's somebody said this to me really nicely. With they said that neo banks are focused on you know what neo banks have on traditional banks, quote unquote, is innovation and a modern tech stack. What a traditional bank has on a neo bank is, uh, is is distribution as well as uh, as well as trust. Um, and I think that the point around this is that, and, and that's probably partly true uh, in in both cases. Uh, but uh, it's really it's really how do they how do each of them who who uh, if it is a battle sort of like who who uh, so who builds the other's capability faster? I do think I, I do, I'll say this one thing, and I and this goes back to your earlier point on Deutsche Bank. I've been having come from the banking industry and worked in startups and now at Google. I'm I'm slightly underwhelmed so far on on the innovation. I still I still think we have so much more. Like the products that I see are still not yet that game changing. You know, um, they some sort of feel like variants of that uh, of the old products. And I think I think really when when this will become game changing, whether it's a traditional bank or a or a neo bank, when they build products that actually you know, you, you're like, wow, I, I didn't know that that could be done. And now it can be done and it's made my life super easy. You know, um, that's that's I think when we'll start seeing it. And it's, so it's, it's, a, it's a game. What I've learned to go back to your first question, what I've learned from Google or, or working in a large technology company is to be obsessive and, and start to be obsessive about the consumer. I still don't think the consumer has been blown away with great capability. Uh, and hopefully we can help uh, enable it. And, and and whether it's a traditional bank or a neo bank, they'll we'll start seeing that. Because as a consumer, uh, there's still ways to go. Sorry, long answer. So from, no, that's great. From Google's perspective, then you're open to partnering both with the banks and with the potential challenger banks that are coming through. We 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 our platform is for uh, where we work. We work is we we work with you know fiat currency. We work with. Uh, and we work with uh, we work with the uh, uh, banks that are uh, that, that it's not in our purview to decide who's a bank or not a bank. Uh, that's that's people like yourselves and your colleagues who decide that. But we do um, we do anybody who is a financial services company. Yeah, we, we they're welcome on the platform. It's an open platform. Google everything is. I guess we've talked a lot about the partnership between banks and tech giants and where the space lies between the two of them, but. Uh, with players like Google coming into financial services, does that even leave space for fintechs to continue to innovate and disrupt? Are they being squeezed out of that equation? No, I, 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 I again, this is a very, this is a, this is a very popular question, right? Like, so it's, it's. Uh, sorry, I'm not trying to. Uh, uh, I'll give you an example of India recently. So um, uh, we we launched a platform called Spot in India, which allows businesses to create branded experiences. We have businesses that are not known to be able to create that and integrate with the, the UPI capabilities that we've got. Um, uh, there's a company called Five Pesa in India, which sort of ma makes trading affordable. Uh, if you know India well, the, the wealth management business in India is not well developed yet. And I think that personally, personal opinion, I think, I think that the wealth management business, having done a little bit of time in it, in India, will develop in a very different way than the traditional models of wealth management from, from the West. As you've seen in in China, and Five Pesa, you know, sort of launched on on our platform and has done incredibly well in being able to provide financial services products that we don't have anything to do with. I mean, these are trading capabilities. So, so things like that, we are able to provide that platform in the same way as most of 
you know, if you look at China's uh, internet giants, most of them are built on top of Android platforms. Uh, I mean, if Android wasn't there, question mark, you know, could you, so, 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 you know, it's, uh, we are, we see ourselves very much as an enabling function um, in, in this process, uh, whether it's India, Singapore, or anywhere else. Got it. It's about that infrastructure that underpins it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I think I've raised you enough for, for this session. I'd love to end with a positive news story. So this is something we, we like to do in Singapore as the Singapore FinTech Festival. It's here one green shoot story. We're, we're going through dark times around the world. Um, I'd love to hear one positive story that you've heard around financial services um, that you'd like to share with the audience. So I'll, uh, I, I think, um, I, I, if, if you indulge me, I'll give you a story and a, and a, and a reflection. Uh, Please do. Uh, uh, I think I think uh, the stories from India, the reflection is global, right? The uh, Kotak Mahindra Bank in India, it's uh, it's one of our partners. We do you know very very interesting, nothing to do with us here, all to do with themselves. Um, they have about thousand branches around in India. They um, they they are an example of a company that invested in digital infrastructure, leveraging national rails and account opening uh, capabilities and KYC and and. Traditionally, they were opening about a thousand. They had a thousand branches. They were opening an equivalent amount of accounts per day, right? Thousand to eighteen hundred, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they invested in digital opening, and instead of being crippled by the uh, COVID nineteen crisis, they quadrupled or, 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 or multiplied. And they, they 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 opened something like fourteen thousand accounts a day uh, because they had that capability in place. So I think that's an incredible story. Uh, because and it should inspire us. I know, I know, for example, BBS and other banks here have done that with migrant workers. Uh, that's incredibly exciting. The other piece, which you know, I was in, I was in banking in, in during the GFC in two thousand seven, two thousand and eight, and I think, I mean, that took a real knock on the financial services industry in terms of trust, in terms of confidence uh, in 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 ourselves. Uh, and I think, I think, I think banks around the world have shown, like, whether it is. Giving temporary cash, solving temporary cash flow problems for consumers, doing fee waivers, help working with governments to make sure that that funds reach consumers. Um, I think the banking industry has done an incredible job uh, in the last couple of months during COVID, uh, and I think it is a possibility of a reset and for us to get moved past the GFC and start thinking about you know how does the financial services industry contribute positively which it does and has always you know i'm long on that uh, has always done through history of time and and i think that's that reset is really exciting let's hope that's the case um happy birthday again and thank you for joining us aman thank you thank you cheers rebecca